I recollect going to, as an art student in the 80s, to the Biennales, which were, what I remember at that time, uh, much more smaller in scale. Um, I checked, 1991 was my first professional Biennale, because I used to work at the uh, Netherlands Office for Fine Arts, which is something like the Arts Council, the British Arts Council. And we were presenting in the Dutch pavilion a Dutch painter, Rob Scholte, and I was supposed to be the youngest curator, so I had to, to be involved in somehow. What I actually did at that specific moment, I'm not so much aware anymore. In 1993 or four, I collect, I recollect, we presented Manifesta at a Russian pavilion at the Venice Biennale. And that was quite an occasion because Victor Misciano, who is now the president of the uh, International Board of the Foundation, was one of the curators. And since Manifesta was this kind of new pan-European initiative, we thought it was a good idea at the grand lady of all biennials to present this new European platform in the Russian pavilion. And it was a quite hilarious presentation, I remember. Hans Orijobis was in the first team, Katalin Nerai from Hungary, Victor Misiano, Adam Renton, Alan mm -hmm. Goldsmith. Um, so it was like many different voices and the, the idea was that we actually made a very clear statement that it was not a one singular curatorial voice but this collaborative uh, of different curators from a different um, generation because Catalinera was already in her 50s and there were very young curators uh, working together but especially, and this I think was a kind innovational uh, element uh, in biennials, that it was like um, not only collaboration on basis of consensus, but specifically coming from very different cultural backgrounds, coming from both East and West, uh, South and North. And um, that was actually the start of the manifesto. Later, just to go one memory, which was really also quite interesting in the Manifesto History in the Venice Biennale because many of the artists presented in uh, Manifesto were later presented in Venice Biennale. I remember Harald Seemann, Sapertuti, I think it was 1998, where at least 17 artists were presented, but also Francesco Bonami's Biennale, in which almost all my board was uh, installed as co-curator. So, the, the, the modest, tiny little manifesto had a little bit of a dialogue with the Grand Lady Venice Biennale. The history of Venice is based on the national pavilions, and Venice as a, as a concept is based on the international um, shows from 19th century. So in this respect, you cannot like completely deny history and try to completely re-institutionalize uh, something which also had its merits in its format itself. And um, me coming from Manifesto as founding director of Manifesto, it's a little bit difficult to say because we were in our um, origin statements about what Manifesto was supposed to be going against the national representation of the Venice Biennale, which at that time um, was, besides Documenta, was not so common. So coming back to the origin of Manifesto, we were really anti-national representation. We said there should be a kind of a non-national representation because the art world is not about showing your passport. It's not showing the, the traditional national identity it cannot be um, visualized in an, in, in an artwork or, or being judged by an artwork. And I think in that respect for us, um, there was a form of criticism. I don't think the Grand Lady, this is why I use it to, to emphasize this kind of historical importance, um, should be criticized on its format. And what you see is that many of the curators or the commissioner are organically changing the format itself. So I think it's the diversity in this kind of unified concept which is called the Venice Biennale. Even like uh, discursive projects are taking place. I remember last time there was a Palestinian um, panel in which projects not with a representational form but with a discursive forms. And I think, this is why I use the word organic, I think there is an organic change 
which much more appeals to what the art world is uh, wanting at this moment. Also, I think in Central and East European countries, the model of how to select uh, commissioners or curators is going differently because in many of the Western countries you see that the kind of a superstructure is selecting curators, but in some of the Eastern countries or Central European countries there is an open call, so they use many different democratic selection methodologies, which are sometimes not at place in Western countries, so that's in my perspective perspective also seen as the law of Murphy, that they use this kind of transparency and some very interesting projects come out of this. I think the scale is a problem coming back to this and this has to do with the cultural marketing of Biennales at large, this has to do with the commercialization of the art world and um, it is of course problematic and, and you know the conditions because for many different target groups the biennials are very much, by many different targets, biennials are criticised. But biennials are unnecessarily for artists who are not only in the prime league, but also in different leagues and need the, the, the possibility to produce new works. Um, I am very much uh, in favour of slowing down the scale of biennials, so that it becomes at least adaptable and possible to really a concisely and precisely being studied and you see with all this site related project that it is, is very difficult. The conditions, and this is also like for me very difficult being a biennial director myself, the conditions in which um, directors of uh, Venice need to work are almost in, I mean, incredible. I don't know, uh, we work together with the Venice Biennale and with people who used to work in the Venice Biennial and I think um, Seeing the, the current political climate in Italy, it is already under large scrutiny if anybody should not even protest against what's happening in Italy or use the platform or the phenomena of Venice. If we are politicizing, analyzing every large event, institution or biennial worldwide, we come up very close to closing down many of those because there are, of course, also in Asia and in other parts of the world, or Latin America, many um, contexts in which we should, on basis of moral code or ethic codes, or as you might ask later, the constitutional laws of what is acceptable and what is not acceptable, deny participation. That Beecher Gordiger has said yes, says a lot about her negotiation skills and I admire her because I know myself how difficult it work could be in contested areas in a contested political climate. The cliché of a biennial is a one-time representational event. The last manifest in Murcia I asked the curators to come up with some proposals for some sustainable projects in the context of the dialogue with Northern Africa. And Bassam al Baroni from Alexandria in Northern Africa came up with this idea of the incubator. Let's use the resources of Manifesta to try to find out if a Pan African event, biennial project, could be established. And this was in a series of workshops, uh, a website, a series of research uh, programs, which continues after Manifesta 8 is closed. But what is wrong with having four months of criticism? Because that's maybe the role of an artist, to annoy us, to irritate us, to put us on a different level. Um, and this is, it's an interesting question you're asking, because for whom are we doing, sometimes I use this word in Manifesta, bloody work, with very precise parameters of what we want to stay is for whom. And I think it's a kind of a misconception or the spectacle of an opening in the press days is the biennial. This is the art, little, tiny little art community. In Manifesto we have 70% of our visit, visitors are local and regional people who are not educated in the biennial. They even don't know what a biennial is. They are interacting with an event which is dealing most of the time with social geopolitical issues which they are part of in their daily life and with artist projects which appeal to their understanding of what life is about.